Hey guys, Mike for Sim Racing 604, and this is my Thrustmaster T818 wheelbase. This is the long awaited direct drive debut of Thrustmaster, one of the top names in sim racing for many, many years. So, a lot of hype, a lot of marketing went into this during development, and now I have it on my table to review. So, let's see if it lives up to the expectations. All right, so as mentioned in the intro, this is my review of the Thrustmaster T818 direct drive wheelbase. And this was sent to me for free by Thrustmaster, uh, though there was no script given, all the opinions and words are my own and no money changed hands. So let's talk a little bit about this T818. Uh, as also I talked about in the intro, I mentioned there was hype and a lot of sort of marketing that went into this during development and they chose a really weird angle to market this. They were just showing us little preview images rather than giving us data and facts and pricing and everything we really wanted to know about the T818. And some part of me actually wondered if we would ever get this, but uh, it, as it turns out, it is hitting the market. And you know, I'm not the first one to review this. This has been on the market for some time. So, uh, you know, the reviews are in and generally positive. And I even did a little preview video. I did a driving video with my 818 um recently and i really liked it so i've had some time to spend with it and get to know it a bit better thrustmaster was also kind enough to send me a proper wheel to review it with rather than the one that came with the tgt2 so uh i should be in a good position to review this now i had enough time to get to understand it have a proper wheel and uh you know i've formed some opinions on it so that's what this video will be all right, so let's get this A18 out of the box. We'll talk more about the specs. We'll get it on the rig, we'll drive it, and then I will share my final thoughts. All right, so here is the Thrustmaster T818 and a couple of quick important specs off the top. Uh, it is rated to 10 Newton meters of sustained force. So they're very clear uh, or they're very deliberate in mentioning that, that uh, it's not just some temporary peak. Uh, they can sustain 10 Newton meters of, uh, of force here with the direct drive system. And and the price is 650 US dollars and just shipping taxes duties that's all on you I talk about this every video but I always get comments like hey you didn't tell me it'd be a hundred bucks to import this into Australia check with your local dealer whoever you buy from uh, to get the full pricing all I can say is uh, the MSRP is 650 bucks for this wheelbase or 600 pounds uh, 650 euro uh, but again taxes duties shipping will vary by region and I can't cover everywhere so uh, those are the two key specs so 10 newton meters sustained force uh, with this T818 and 650 bucks and the first thing you notice is the shape it's hexagonal. Probably said that word wrong, but uh, yeah, it's uh, generally hexagon shaped, which I really like. And you can't see it now, but you'll see it when I get on the rig. But there's actually an RGB strip that goes all the way around the front of this hexagon, which allows you to, uh, which can be customized to different colors depending on what you're looking for. And you can make it match your rig, or you can just put a cool, funky uh, light. I believe the plan is to eventually have that be active and interactive with your uh, with your sim, so it'll sh show you different flags and things like that, which is cool. Uh, but for now, it's just decorative, but a uh, good piece of styling just the same. Something I've been critical of, as much as I love Fanatec, as much as I love Moza, um, their mid-range entries, which are the uh, uh, R9 from Moza and the CSLDD or the GTDD Pro uh, from Fanatec, they look like shipping containers. So as good as those products are, they don't get any style points from me. Uh, but the general shape here from Thrustmaster, the hexagonal shape is really cool. You got the lights and then these side panels, these metal side panels are removable. And you either can or will be able to buy different side panels for this to custom match the colors to your rig. So what it ships with, uh, is kind of a, I don't know colors very well, but uh, kind of a bluish color, uh, metallic obviously. Um, but speaking of metallic, there's not much in the way of visible metal here. Something I was critical of with the Logitech G Pro wheel was the use of plastic for the outside. So this is a ton of plastic. Other than these side panels, it appears to be all plastic. And there's vents here at the front, sorry, vents here at the front. And then it goes to sort of a slightly slimmer profile here. Overall, I really like the styling, but it is an interesting choice that they use this much plastic. And um, depending on where you sit with plasticky wheelbases, personally, I would rather have metal, um, but maybe it comes at the expense of, um, 
cost. For one, the expense of expense, uh, but but also uh, the sort of available level of uh, of design that you can have. Um, perhaps that ties in with that. I'm not entirely sure, but I didn't like it on the Logitech G Pro. Not a huge fan of it here with the Thrustmaster. It just seems like if these companies are looking to step up, like Logitech went from their G29, G920. Uh, I guess the 923 was in there too, uh, but they stepped up to, to the DD market and the G Pro and then made it all plastic, much like the outgoing one. And same as Thrustmaster, they're kind of trying to position themselves slightly higher in the market, but then they give us a mostly plastic design. Not a huge fan of it. Is it a deal breaker? No, but uh, just kind of one of those things that would have been nice to have. Uh, flipping it around, looking at the back here, I'll try and get some zoomed in shots, but uh, it comes with a power brick, of course. And that plugs in here. There's the uh, on off switch at the back. And then there's a USB C port. And then there's two ports off to the right. The one is to connect to the pedals. It's, a, I believe, an RJ12 connection, a custom RJ12 connection, which really annoys me. Just use standard RJ12, please. And then next to it is an RJ45 port, uh, which will connect uh, to future wheel bases or future wheels, rather. So right now, I believe all of the existing removable Thrustmaster wheels will connect to the 818 wheelbase. Pardon me, I even tried the uh, GT, no, sorry. I even tried the uh, TGT2 wheel and uh, it worked on here, no problem. Uh, but I'll be testing with a different wheel, thanks to Thrustmaster for sending me that. And uh, yeah, then if we flip around at the side here, we got a couple of buttons. Uh, probably the most notable button is the e-stop. So some force feedback solutions on the market, excuse me, some direct drive solutions on the market come with e-stops. They're usually um, separate buttons that mount to the side of your rig. You can hit it with your knee or some people put them in a position where you can reach over and if there's an emergency, you can hit stop. Um, Personally, I've never seen a huge use for it. I've driven direct drive for five years. Never once had a situation where I would need an e-stop. Sometimes the wheel will go crazy if you get hit or something, but I generally just go hands off. Um, but there is uh, an e-stop here if you need it. So it's cool that they integrated it. And then lastly, to talk about in terms of design, up front here is the quick release. So, it's all right, trying to work from behind here. A uh, little flip up latch. And then you slide your, again, Thrustmaster wheel uh, on there. You flip this down and it clamps down and that's it. So it comes with the wheel side, comes with one wheel side unit. So you can put that onto most Thrustmaster wheels and then that becomes quick releasable. <laughs> and you can slide it on there, hit the, hit the flip that uh, lever there and it clamps down on it and that's all you got to do and it's actually a really cool system. So overall pretty cool. Uh, it is designed to bottom mount. There is a lot more to say about that but uh, it is designed to be bottom mount and we will circle back to the bottom mount issue uh, when I give my final thoughts. That's your T818 from Thrustmaster uh, in a nutshell. It does come with the power brick. It does come with the uh, USB cable so you should have everything you need uh, except the wheel. So you got to make sure you get a compatible wheel. But if you come from the Thrustmaster ecosystem and have those removable wheels, uh, you should be good to go. So uh, time now to get this on the rig. Uh, when I was going through the sort of itinerary before, I, um, I forgot to mention that I want to have a look at the software. So we'll have a quick look at the software and then start driving with the Thrustmaster T818. So just before we get in game, I just want to show you the uh, Thrustmaster control panel, the T818 control panel that is, as you can see here, when I turn my wheel, it shows it in the software. And then you've got your various buttons, of course, which is more tied to the wheel than the wheelbase. But anyway, just wanted to show you that it all shows up here. And uh, you can adjust your degrees of rotation here. Right now it is bound to stop there and there. That's 540 degrees, but you can use the slider to increase that to 1080. And as you can see, it spins freely all the way to 1080, or you could, for some strange reason, uh, Turn it down to 40 degrees. I don't even, yeah, that's what that looks like. So anyway, uh, basically uh, a lot of rotation options. Whoops. Can't type, forgive me. 540 is what I usually keep it set at. So that's what I'll go with. Uh, gain settings here. Uh, for some reason, when you get it, it uh, comes in, I believe at 70% and locked. And then you cannot turn it up beyond that. You can turn it down, but 70% is the cap. 
I don't know why they do that when it's just one click. Like I could, okay, so it's so they can give you a warning. I got you. So anyway, I like to keep mine set at 100%. I know a lot of people don't. I know there's safety concerns. So just do your research. Make sure you have a suitable level of force feedback. But I like to leave mine as high as I can in the software and then turn it down in game. Um, and then by default, it's set to sport. Do yourself a favor. If you get the T818, immediately turn it to performance. Don't look back. Don't go with comfort. Don't go with sport. Go with performance. Extreme feels like a bit too much. And then uh, the recommended settings that Thrustmaster sends you with the 818 uh, generally will tell you to run about 10% uh, damper forces. And I've found that works well for me. So uh, we can test the force feedback, I think, can't we? Why isn't that working? Let's see here. No, I don't seem to be able to test the force feedback. It used to work. Anyway, uh, trust me when I say that it works. Uh, and then we can adjust the uh, color, of course. You can hopefully see that in the camera above me. Um, you can adjust the color of the of the hexagon at the front, the LED hexagon. So that's cool. So that's the software, unfortunately, and fortunately, that's it. So if you're somebody who doesn't like to tinker too much in software, you're in luck. Uh, if you're somebody who does, then unfortunately, I've got no good news for you. But uh, anyway, that is the T818 control software. And now let's get it in game. All right, so here we are in Assetto Corsa at the Nordschleife on board the Toyota TSO20, or at least the uh, Race Sim Studio version of it. We'll just turn a quick lap here. Probably not so quick, but uh, I'll do what I can. So right away, right away in performance mode. Oh my goodness, this feels so, so, so good. <laughs> I mean, yeah. This, if you have any doubts, if you're sitting on the fence thinking, you know, should I get the T818? You know, is the force feedback going to be good enough? Uh, it is it is more than good enough this thing is well above its price point in terms of performance I have wheels that are significantly stronger than this in terms of the sighted uh, Newton meter figure of torque of peak torque and this one blows them out of the water in terms of detail it's very very impressive I have it set to hundred percent in the software control panel, whoa, control panel, and then 40% in Assetto Corsa. And you can probably see it if there's enough sort of definition in the video, but it's literally shaking and it just looks like a vibration, you know, shooting up my whole arm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, speaking of shooting, I overshot that corner by a lot, but uh, here we are. Um, yeah, and it just looks like a very fine vibration. That is the level of precision and power you're getting out of this T818. Absolutely fantastic. Seriously impressive force feedback. Some of the best of any wheel I own. It is really, really good, or wheel base rather. Extremely, extremely good. And I would say a subtle course, uh, I mean, your opinion of the force feedback in AC will vary, of course. But for me, it's it's among the best, but not necessarily the best. I would put AMS 1 above it. I would put uh, R Factor 2 above it. I would, uh, at this point, probably put ACC above it. And um, yeah, so uh, it's not as if I'm working with some uh, fantastic piece of software that, uh, you know, feels good on every wheel all the time. This one, a bit more thought has to go into it. And uh, yeah, this 818 just absolutely delivers, just knocks it out of the park. Truly fantastic force feedback. I'm gonna finish this lap, but uh, hopefully you already get the point that I'm just so, so impressed with this. And even more so, if you saw my previous video, <laughs> another near miss there uh, if you saw my previous video where I was trying out the 818 um, I was very impressed with it but uh, I was using a, a wheel that I didn't really like and now I have this Sparco 310 wheel uh, from Thrustmaster and it just makes the experience so much better you get yourself a good wheel it can really uh, obviously improve your experience with a wheel base so uh, that's what I've got here it yeah I really can't express enough how impressed I am with this performance of the T818. Truly awesome. There's so many options fighting for your money at the sort of 8 to 10 Newton meter or maybe 8 to 12 Newton meter um, direct drive wheelbase 
level. And I, I would put this one near the top, absolutely, in terms of force feedback quality, if for no other reason. It just, man, it is so detailed, so excellent. And yeah, just Thrustmaster has, has hit this one out of the park. I really, really love this wheelbase. But of course, they're not the only one that impresses me. I mean, like the R5, I think, even though it's, you know, half the power of this roughly, um, it, it, it's great for what it is. The R9, the CSLDD, the GTDD Pro with eight Newton meters, uh, the Logitech G Pro. I mean, these are all great options. So it's not as if this is the first direct drive wheelbase I've, I've felt or the first one I've been impressed with, but uh, yeah, just, it certainly has a lot going for it and uh, the folks at Thrustmaster I hope you guys are, are proud of what you accomplished because I think as a sort of opening salvo into the competitive world of direct drive wheelbases Thrustmaster this is a great great job you've done so yeah very impressive and again I'm gonna finish this lap because why not everything from understeer to curbs to uh, road detail the road detail oh and grass detail is as good as I've felt anywhere ever <laughs> and I've tried some uh, very fancy wheel bases and uh, the level of feedback I mean it's it's probably a bit too dramatic I mean you wouldn't expect I've never driven anything like the TSO 20 but you wouldn't expect a car even with stiff suspension and slick tires to necessarily have this much like this is way way more than a road car would have for example so maybe it's overdone for the settings I have but uh, yeah still incredibly detailed it just kind of shows you what the wheelbase is capable of so nicely done to Thrustmaster all right just a few more turns to go and then we'll be on the Dottinger straight I guess I've thrown away the lap, so I don't necessarily need to finish it, but I will because I'm having a great, great time here in Assetto Corsa. And uh, yeah, what a wheelbase, man. Like this, there's just little micro, micro, very, very light force feedback effects here. And uh, again, probably overdone, but you can still sort of get a, a sense of the precision, the level of detail in the, uh, in the force feedback, and it's just, beyond impressive quite staggering actually so yeah super impressed with the t818 so after this i'm going to get back to the table and i will give my final thoughts on the t818 tell you how much of a terrible time i had and waste of time why did i review this no i'm kidding of course i had a great time reviewing it all right let's get to the table all right so time for final thoughts on the thrustmaster t818 wheelbase overall i'm sure you guys heard it in my voice i love this thing i think it's a fantastic wheelbase um so we'll start with the well we'll go through good neutral and bad things i like things i'm okay with and things i don't like about the t818 we'll start off with the good uh the first thing is the force feedback if your metric for for what makes a good wheelbase is force feedback quality ultimately and everything else is just kind of window dressing well, then I think, especially at the price, you're going to have a hard time beating this. I think it's a phenomenal performing wheelbase in terms of the force feedback it gives you. Uh, very crisp, very strong when you need it to be, and uh, just an overall really, really nice performing wheelbase. And the second thing is this quick release. Have to admit, I was a hater when uh, Thrustmaster came out to market and said, you know, we've redesigned the quick release. I was like, why are we doing this? Because uh, I think Moza does uh, quick releases the best, and I, I still think that despite this. But I will admit that <laughs> Thrustmaster uh, crushed it. For what they did, they weren't happy with any quick release system on the market, I suppose, and decided to go their own way. And it worked out. It's a really nice quick release system. They did a great job with it. Uh, so I will admit when I'm wrong and uh, say that Thrustmaster did a really, really good job with this quick release system. And of course, uh, something I like, I, I talk about this all the time is that when you buy nice sim racing gear it should have 
have some automotive inspiration. We, we're, we're car people. We love tapered lines. We love curves. We love smooth things. And uh, then, you know, the Fanatex and the Moses of the world ship us shipping containers. They're bricks. They're not great to look at. Uh, but uh, one of the nicer looking options in the market for sure is this 818. I love the hexagonal shape. I love the LED strip around here and the replaceable side panels. So you do get that extra bit of styling. Is it going to matter to everybody? No, but I just think it's a nice looking wheelbase and uh, Thrustmaster deserves credit uh, for doing a nice job with this. And then the, uh, or one more thing to talk about in the good category is definitely the Ford and backward compatibility. So I love the fact that if you're already in the Thrustmaster ecosystem, you don't have to worry about buying a wheel. You can just take it off your old wheelbase, plunk it onto your new one, or in the future, they've added that port in the back. So if there are compatibility issues with future wheels, uh, you'll be able to just run some sort of cord uh, through to the new wheel and make it fully compatible, which I love. So uh, great thinking there by Thrustmaster uh, with the backward and forward compatibility. And then lastly, in the good category, uh, uh, we'll talk about the recommended game settings. So often I think that hardware manufacturers, sim hardware manufacturers miss the boat in terms of uh, shipping a really nice product without any settings. To me, it's like um, having a racing sim uh, with a really bad default setup on your favorite car. <laughs> so uh, Thrustmaster makes recommendations saying, here, try this. I think every sim hardware manufacturer should do exactly that. You're not, of course, bound to stick with it and you might try it and you might really not like it or you might really love it. But the point is it gets you started. It probably gets you pretty close. It's probably gonna be one of those things where it's exactly for nobody but it's a good starting point for everybody so uh, well done to Thrustmaster on uh, uh, walking us through some recommended settings for most of the popular racing sims and then into the neutral category things I'm just kind of okay with and the first one is the lack of console support so Thrustmaster to me has always sort of been um, beginner to intermediate gear and I always associate that with console support and I think a lot of their customers will as well maybe you do so they the reason I put it in the neutral category instead of bad is because they they they, they admit like they they will come to console eventually uh, but just the units that are shipping right now uh, are PC only and it's kind of a shame because it would nice to would be nice to uh, be able to do both especially given the history of Thrustmaster and them typically us uh, you know with one foot on either side of the fence but that's not the case here so unfortunate it's a fantastic PC wheelbase but unfortunately it can't be in its current iteration a fantastic console wheelbase and the second thing in the neutral category is the price. So $650, €650, Euro, 600 pounds. Um, it's just kind of okay. <laughs> um, I think it outperforms a lot of other sort of mid-tier direct drive systems. Um, but the price isn't so good that everyone's just going to say, this is the one I want. And that's a shame. So if it was so phenomenal and outperformed everything else in this price bracket, then you would say, okay, Thrustmaster is the way to go. Or if it was so cheap that it outperformed, uh, or sorry, it, uh, you know, won out on price, you could say, okay, Thrustmaster is the way to go. Unfortunately, at 650 bucks, it just kind of slots it right into the neutral category where you have to kind of shop around and see what are the advantages of Fanatec? What are the advantages of Moza, Simagic, Logitech? I have to give consideration to these other options. And uh, so I, I'm not saying they could have done it cheaper. I'm just saying it's too bad that the price wasn't sub 500, let's say, and uh, they would have it would have just been instantly okay. Thrustmaster is the way to go. Uh, they've done a phenomenal job with pricing, and the, it performs better than any other option at 500 bucks. But that's not the case. Uh, the components that went into this necessitated a slightly higher price. So it just kind of slots it into the okay category in terms of pricing. And then lastly, in the neutral category, the default in the Thrustmaster software should absolutely be performance mode. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't go that way. It was like a switch went on. I was trying it out. I think it's called gaming mode or something like that is, is the default. And you're driving around. It's like, okay, it's got good strength. This is pretty good. Feels okay. And then you go to performance mode and it's just like this eureka moment where you say, oh, now I get it. And it, the, the detail just 
jumps through the roof and every other reviewer I've seen says the same thing. You have to go performance mode. And uh, so I don't know why they would have the software default to a different mode because I think people might get a bad initial impression. And if for whatever reason they can't find that setting to flip it to performance mode, they might be left overall thinking this is not a great wheelbase, but I think it is a great wheelbase. So definitely Thrustmaster missing out by not putting performance mode as the default. And then lastly, in the bad category, things I don't like about this. Number one is the soft Software. The Thrustmaster software is a big disappointment for a wheelbase like this. Um, they're trying to position themselves in the sort of mid to high tier of uh, sim racing wheelbases, and there's so little customization that's possible via the software, and that's a real disappointment. To me, the analogy I would have is if you tried some new racing sim and the physics were incredible, the tire model was incredible, graphics, sounds, everything came together, but you weren't allowed custom setups you'd be blown away. You'd be thinking, wow, these guys have really dropped the ball on this. And that's kind of how I feel about this Thrustmaster. Yes, you can do in-game settings, that's true. Uh, but the default Thrustmaster software and the level of customization, quite frankly, is not up to snuff. Uh, almost every other wheelbase I own blows it out of the water in terms of the customization you can do uh, from your Windows screen and then load into the game. Uh, because it kind of puts the onus entirely on the game uh, to have those levels of customization to get it dialed in where you want. That's not the case. Thrustmaster is a big company. Surely they can uh, hire a better software development team to give more customization. I'm not saying it needs to be Sim Commander 4 with just some unbelievable amount of customization, uh, but it should be more than just a few sliders. It should be, uh, you know, adjustment for curb feel, adjustment for road feel, adjustment for, um, uh, whatever, engine rumble. There should be, let's say, 10 sliders to use a round number uh, to get the force feedback dialed into your liking. Unfortunately, it's not there, and it's a big disappointment uh, for this uh, Thrustmaster. And then lastly, in the things I don't like, whew, deep breath before I say this because it infuriates me to no end, uh, these mounting holes on the bottom, um, they went with a different spacing for some reason, and I can't figure out why. And I watched the car doc, who's my, my favorite sim racing YouTube channel right now, and he had the exact same issue. He had to drill his, his wheel plate uh, to get his mounted, and I did too. And uh, it's a bummer. Um, I don't know what they were thinking with these holes. It fits, it doesn't fit any of the holes I have in my wheel plate. Um, I have tried Logitech, I have tried Simagic, Fanatec, Moza, um, there, I'm sure there's more Camus. Like I've tried so many brands and I've always been able to get at least two screws in, but these holes line up with nothing. I don't know what Thrustmaster was thinking. And insult to injury, they sell this. This is a, it's, it's well done for what it is, uh, <laughs> FYI. Uh, but this is a wheel plate mounting adapter and I think it costs about 30 bucks and comes with all the bolts. So the, the intent is that this goes onto your wheelbase and then it gives you these sort of tracks where you can put other bolts and um, yeah, get it mounted to your wheel deck. So what are we saying here? So these holes are meant for bottom mounting your T818. What is this for? bottom mounting your T818, why do I have to buy this separate piece and spend more of my money <laughs> when they could have just lined the holes up properly. I, I, I really think they dropped the ball on this. This one is infuriating. I don't know what they were thinking. If they had come to market with a rig at the same time as the 818 and um, you know it had its own custom hole pattern and, and for whatever reason they decided to go that way, maybe to corner the market to prevent competitors from mounting onto their gear, not great, but kind of understandable. But this one, it just seems like they went rogue and just decided this is the whole spacing we're going to use. Uh, and it's a bottom mount solution. But if you want to bottom mount it, you need this. So just, again, deep breath, Mike. It's not that, see, whoops, sorry, you guys can't see that. Deep breath, it's not the end of the world, it's just video games. But at the same time, I don't know what Thrustmaster was thinking. This feels like a cash grab, quite frankly. Uh, so I, I, not accusing them of that, but it just seems like uh, not enough thought went into the bottom mount solution. 
Whew, okay, that's out of the way. So <laughs> hopefully that didn't negatively flavor the, the water too much. I love this thing. I think it's a fantastic option in the uh, in the mid-tier direct drive space. There's so many options out there. There's Moza, there's Fanatec, there's Simagic, there's uh, Logitech, you know, including the wheel, you're a thousand bucks, but still it's right in that sort of price range. And uh, the TA-180 is among the best. Uh, I think it's really, really great. Definitely needs, um, uh, a, a better software, but that to me is something achievable. And then when they start shipping for console, uh, fix these holes, please Thrustmaster. Make it fit a standard uh, wheel plate because there's really no excuse for people having to uh, drill their rig or buy one of these. So um, other than that, I think it's phenomenal. Force feedback is phenomenal. I think the price is right where it needs to be. Uh, the quick release system somehow works despite me being a skeptic. And uh, overall, it's just very nice. So strong recommendation from me on the T818. Thank you to Thrustmaster for giving me the opportunity to review this. Thank you to you for watching and we will see you next time.